Okay. Okay. Um, when uh, I came from Finland, 1958, there was only I and my husband and two my children. And uh, four of my children was born here in Canada. Um, Satu Maria, who died when she was 54 years old, she, she was a nurse. And uh, she died for a um, complication for her diabetes. And then is Sonia, who lives in BC, Victoria. And then is Sariemma, who lives in Blindfold. And then Sara, my youngest one. And she's um, taking care of patients here in uh, Blindfold General Hospital. So while we was there in uh, Thompson, a key waiting uh, uh, college, they, uh, they pay me to teach weaving. Mm -hmm. And um, I start teaching um, first few nights, I was teaching finger weaving, because that's what they, how they do in Finland when they start teaching something, they teach by first finger, finger weaving so you can feel the yarn. <clears throat> so I was doing like that. Some like to have really long ones and, and that's belt or then something in their legs. And then later on, there was a little bit more uh, complicated weaving because you get pattern in both sides. Hmm. And uh, this name in Finnish name is Takana. And then uh, when I went to start um, table weaving and Lil, this is from a little uh, loom, so I, I teach them how to do these patterns, and this is little table runner, so that's what we was doing. And then, when we went to bigger loom, then it's completely different story. So, in a bigger loom, we was doing mats, different type of mats. And uh, and and then uh, to raising up the loom, it's it's very very uh, different. First, you have to make this warp, and uh, then you have to put that in the, there in the in at the back there, and then you have to put the uh, through these heroes. There's little holes in here. Put that and then after you put it through the weave and then when you start weaving mats I collect in my girls all skirts and and pillowcases and and sheets I color them and then I cut them and ripes and different type of ripes and and even that is kind of, if you don't know how to cut, because uh, if there is thinner material, you have to cut thinner. If there is a little bit heavier, so then you have to, have to, you know, you should think about what you're doing and how you're doing. And uh, I have here, I, I cover up, I have here, all kinds of, you know, what I've been doing. So it's not just for one day job to doing it because it takes a long time to carry all these things. Now you may be thinking about how come I have all these dresses here. Uh, I used to sew all our clothes for our children. And then when there was wedding, so at this one over there, that's when, when my son got married. That's it. And that's when my nephew got married. Here, when, uh, when my daughters got married. <laughs> and then, uh, usually I make curls, same kind of dresses. Then, uh, when I have mine, so I make same kind of dresses for them. Christmas time, when... Uh, in Thompson, they asked us to go to sing in Christmas concert. So I made 
and all uh, long rests in there for that time. And then came time when, again, when girls was growing. And here is special one. I saw this picture. That's our 25th wedding. <laughs> so this is the rest, what I, I have on in here in this picture. And now we've been married 56 years. Okay, and here is, you can see girls have same kind of dresses. They was used like chickens, a bigger, 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 smaller, smaller, and smaller. <laughs> and uh, that way, you know, that's what we was doing. So then, now, then when we, we moved, when Inko closed that mine, we had to move to uh, Ontario. And they opened up new mine in Sabandown. So then um, I started doing writing more. I've been doing writing all my life, but I hasn't been saving any. So this one was my first book. And Sonia, who lives now in BC, she um, tried to discover. And uh, then was my husband's birthday. So this book, I own it for him. And that's a lake where he used to go fishing. And then when the girls, they got diabetes, three of them, Satu Maria, Sonia, and Sari, they got diabetes. So here is lots of poems when I was sitting nighttime and reading or watching so they don't go into, like so many times I have to take them to hospital. And then this was also that time when... Um, when girls were sick and uh, matter of fact here is about 40 poems what later in Finland they make them to be songs hmm. yeah sort of my youngest one um uh, she's our dream when uh, he when daddy was far away working and she's our dream like how she was transferred into little bird and she fly to see daddy in up north. Yeah, and that, and that daddy found that little bird and then, uh, yeah. And then she came back in, <laughs> in morning and that was so, she was so full of that dream and she keep telling me that over and over. So then I finally put that book for him. Here is when I was remembering that church where I was confirmed and uh, they had a very different type of um, people when they ring the bell. So I wrote uh, this one and then my um, son-in-law transferred into friends, uh, friends and then uh, my daughter Saya in English and then so that's uh, about three languages and they, that's children's coloring book. So then uh, I wrote a book about, you can take a close-up picture. That's about uh, when uh, how immigration in our family started. Um, both my grandfathers, they came to the United States. They never came back because then those wars start and uh, they was not able to come back. And then my daddy, he always uh, was missing his his father. And when he was a young man, he came to Canada and he started looking for his father. But they always went across. When daddy tried to go to Minnesota, he was uh, coming to Canada. And was they they never met one another and because mail and everything was different. And uh, daddy was doing different things job all over. Matter of fact, his last job, what I believe, was here in the north and cranberry porridge. That's that's really, um, I like to believe that's true because so many things like my daddy say, when you go to Canada uh, looking for a woman, her name is Mrs. Sauna, and say hello from me. So I went to Timmy's, I went to Capuscane, 
I went different part of Ontario visiting and I always was asking, do you know uh, if here is Mrs. Sauna? Till I came here at Cranberry Porridge and um, my youngest daughter Sarah's mother-in-law uh, lent lent me Cranberry Porridge history book. And um, I couldn't believe when I was reading there was uh, Mrs. Sauna have um boarding house near the um, museo here, what is museo here? It was a uh, uh, train station, and that's what that is. Hey, it's other side of the train station. And uh, he say her name is so difficult to pronounce, so uh, everybody calling her Mrs. Sauna, <laughs> and that's what it was in that book. And um, I was reading and crying, reading and crying. Here is my daddy when he was young man and he came to Canada. And here is his mom and two sisters. And they never came. She had a passport and she wants to come to Canada. But then when daddy came back to Finland and uh, then uh, they started having family. My older sister was, I think, so three, four years old when daddy came back to Finland. And he always wants to, uh, some of uh, his children, to come to Canada. But uh, boys, they was always saying, hmm, who go to Canada? How You don't know any language. How are you going to find a job? And how are you going to live if, be, because if you don't know language? And I was the first one. <laughs> brave enough and I know um, daddy was teaching us uh, us children about money so I know about money and then uh, but not very much oh he tried to teach so many things but uh, uh, oh it was hard first and I remember that uh, first day in a uh, first we we fly to uh, Sweden and from there we uh, fly to uh, Paris and from Paris we fly to Montreal and that first day at the Montreal my uh, son was that time one year and three months old and uh, then when they have some kind of automatic machine there <laughs> he wants to be all the time in that machine and, and, and we didn't know how to ask more money to put it in that machine oh it was hard and we was thirsty we don't know how to say, uh, can we have milk or something to drink? But then uh, one man at the, the their train station, um, he knew some Finn man and he came and he was interpreting and uh, asking what we like to eat. And it was fish soup. <laughs> we eat fish soup first. And uh, yeah. And then he was explaining, you know, we tried to go to fin to Winnipeg, and uh, uh, we was getting milk and uh, you know a little bit extra things in a train trip. Anyway, yeah. So then this is it, the mat. That's I when I was sitting and watching my girls. I re re remember, you know, what mom and daddy been saying. Here is then the, the this is all picture, but there is my daddy and there is my mom, and there is my daddy's mom and mommy's mom, and uh, then when uh, when uh, her husband um, came to United States, Armas and uh, Uncle Armas was only three months old, so uh, this first book explained how hard it was. He never came back, and she had nine children, and she uh, tried to uh, make a living by weaving, washing people's clothes, and uh, knitting, and uh, and then she started making like um, like bread. But it was an I don't know what is that English name. It's it was like coffee bread, but uh, she dip it in the uh, milk and then uh, with sugar and then fry like that, 
so I don't know that English name, but anyway, she was making making that kind of um, making money to making baking and doing all kinds of things like that. And then she was midwife mm. for whole village. And uh, she died, I think, in so 1972. And she teach me knitting. I was only four or five years old. So uh, she wants me to knit um, my daddy uh, mittens because daddy was in a war at that time and I did it with, with her teaching. So then there is book uh, for three. That's about when as youngest generation when we came to Canada. So that's say about how they was doing here. And this one is my uncle Armas. And uh, she, he was three months old when he daddy left. And this is about uh, his life and uh, how how everything was, you know, when uh, he was at the war and uh, and different things. He he even liked to play accordion, and he played drums, violins, accordion. And, you know, he was also, you know, if, when they dances at the village, they always asking him to go and uh, and play. And uh, here is then his son's son and daughter. And uh, they was, that's a little um, graveyard where my daddy is then, uh, I mean, when uh, my uncle is then buried. So that's, and this is then in the same book, this fatherless book, what I try to write in English. And then my daughter and my niece, they um, <clears throat> translated. So it's not very good translation, but um, that's what I wrote about that little history. How, how it, and this is the Finnish language, the same thing. And then uh, these are a little bit bigger. And then the one, one more that's a um, poetry book. And there is um, some of these poems are in, um, also in music. There is uh, music in it. So that's my, so then I learned to sew. I learned to knit. I learned to crochet. This is the modern type of thing now. Yeah. And then I show it to show it to your. Um, this is my little um, workshop. It will, it's full of stuff because um, this is small, and I want to you know keep everything in here. And my husband made that. This used to be scratch, and he made that. So I'm I have a little. I want to get bigger place so then I can teach. Because so many people, people they like to learn sewing and knitting and and crocheting and and uh, but I hasn't found place and I think so my age and everything and pretty soon it will be too late to even think about. So here is some of my creation, what I've been doing. Now they can there is those very good yarn. So I don't have to change colors. They changing, and little ones, and these little ones, and then these different socks. And these I make now. This is the last things what I been doing now for Whoa. slippers. Star slippers. <laughs> there, and then I have uh, like different. And then I make long ones. Yeah. And here is something what uh, I have when uh, uh, my youngest daughter's little daughter Emma was little, so they didn't have to carry Emma. So I remember in Finland we have something like that when uh, our daughter and son was little. So I, they can uh, put baby in there and here is opening and then they can use carry and, and <laughs> mm -hmm. A little one thinks, you know, they walk in, so that was good. I can do, I can do so. 
Yeah, and all. Then here when um, when I got married, we don't have no bridal showers and things like that. So uh, I was feeding myself. I tried to put there is little lace, but I don't know if you can see it. And uh, right there. Yeah, this is uh, linen what I was weaving, and then I make this is some um, heavier linen, so I make seeds and then crochet at the these <laughs> edges. So these kind of things when you got married in the Finland fifties, if you want to have something, you have to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And there is more mats what I've been selling in uh, uh, when whoever wants to buy and I don't get this mm -hmm. oh my goodness I gonna take this one from there <laughs> here is many hour work uh, again you know very good and uh, there's mittens for different colors and these are whoever wants to get for Christmas gift and if they know my address so they can order and uh, I can do it if I don't have those what they're looking for so I can and then I make these slippers these are really warm and really uh, really good here's a little bit and these are soft these are men's side what's the story with the star crystal said you told her some story one time star this yeah the star pattern on the mitts oh yeah oh that, that was some, i don't remember now because there's so many stories but <laughs> there was about um like in Finland, when there is so dark evenings, so then the, you know those older ladies, they try to invent it. It make look like star when you are in a cold winter night outside. So then, uh, then you have you know stars in your hands. Uh -huh. I don't remember. There is so many different stories about when those uh, ladies tell. And that's the thing when if you don't put them down, you forgot. Yeah, and then now I come to demonstrate a little bit about weaving. The, this weaving room is homemade. Uh, we bought that in Thunder Bay. And this is the very heavy and I like this one because it doesn't move when I do weaving, so it doesn't move. So here is barrels at the bottom there. There's two. They, you can put up to eight, but now I have two barrels and uh, two of these, um, where's heralds. So when you put down this barrel, so this, this is the opening. So then you can, you can put that material through the opening. Oops. There. And you always try to look at uh, see him here is okay. And then you change the barrels and then you get. So it's um, when you make that really nice and tight, it's going to last you a lifetime if you don't throw them to washing machine. If you just uh, use it cross and, and make a bathtub or some place or summertime outside just wash it gentle so these I I remember when mom make so those mats they last for for years because Christmas time mom have different mats summertime she put different mats and uh, They are um, they selling mats in the um, Scandinavian center. They used to, I don't know if they do anymore, but they used to. 
in uh, around Christmas time. And they ask prices from Finland, how much it will be. I don't remember anymore exactly, but uh, I think so it was something like $30 one feet. And uh, people here, they said, my goodness, so expensive. But this yarn, first I ordered that from Finland. And then how many hours it takes when I put that in a warp. And then I have to have help when I put that in the, there at the back. I don't know even English name for that. And then it takes time to put the, through the heralds and money to buy read and put it through. Then when you start looking for what you're going to do, it takes time to cut you close and uh, looking for, you know, different colors. And so when you put all that work together and if they charging $30 in one fee, it's not too much. Because just ordinary people here in Canada, I don't know how much they get. United States, they get $15 an hour, but I don't know how much here. So uh, when you think about how much work you put in to doing weaving, so <laughs> If you think you're going to do weaving for living, now you're going to die before <laughs> you mm -hmm. get your, you know, so much to sell that you can buy groceries. And then usually I always try to make same length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then I cut it. I love being here. And then mostly when I do my writing so I've been all alone and then I'm thinking about and then sometimes I like I have my paper and pen there and then uh, if I get poem so I just stop for a while and wrote my poem and um, and that I like to be all alone because then uh, I think so that's Create a time when you can see just like that. So now you know how to do math. Ruyus <laughs> are Ruyus are something what they do in Finland. I don't know if they used to have that in blanket, but uh, <clears throat> it's a weave and it's a woolen backing like that. And then these, when you make Turkish knots, they are different. Like this is very famous Finnish uh, artist who was trying this um, pattern. And that name is Northern Light. I love that one. And one what I make like that was, um, uh, it's now in Florida. When people came to up north and then I was almost uh, ready to start this one. So they asked if they can have it. And then, uh, okay, I sell it to them. And then I make this one. And all together, I've been making these big ones. I was counting about 10 big ones. But I still have my youngest daughter and uh, Sariema. Those two, I don't have no reviews for them. So maybe then this one and then maybe that other one what is there in uh, in that wall it's rosary so when you go to finnish home real finnish home you find almost every single home they had different type of ruyu that's ruyu r y j y a ruyu and this uh, this is then other type that's rano and you know, if they don't have Ryu, certainly they have Ranos. This is my creation, uh, and I named this one for Christmas. Because, you know, I want to put a little bit different colors. What I was thinking about uh, putting Christmas present, different uh, golden and uh, yellow pattern, and then um, green and, and red, they are Christmas colors. So. 
and I used to make lots of these but I sold one of what was my favorite was Lake Superion I make that in Ontario and I was thinking about like Lake Superion so huge lake in Canada and then uh, when you are some to a stormy day you can see those waves how they are they, they are actually white at the top so I try to in my mind I was try to create it but I saw that one and I hasn't been making new maybe someday if I going to be healthy maybe I try to do because I have out and what I and um, then I was also in uh, Thompson they like to have something different so I I start teaching them how to do crochet and how to do this one and this one I make my daughter Satu who die and uh, she loved this one so then when she dies so I was able to have that back yeah so and this is one thing from Finland from Lapland and uh, <laughs> in northern Lapland near uh, San, Santa Claus uh, place they selling those kind of things <laughs> yeah and then uh, I just I start some because I thought I saw it how to do men's mittens I make this kind of men's mittens and there you don't need very much yarn for uh, using other color yeah I show it to how to do knitting yeah yeah I learned it so young and and then uh, I must be about five or maybe six because my my grandmother died 70 I mean 50 <laughs> ma'am grandmother died in that 42 when I had to count in my head 42 so uh, I must be pretty young yeah and then one other thing I try to teach like I have five girls and uh, I try to teach my girls how to do um, heal and <laughs> I, I honestly can say that I don't know if uh, if they none of them if they remember how to do it but anyway here we go and um, first you do um, you have four needles so then that uh, two needles you do back and forth back and forth up to you think that's your heel how how length you know is your heel so then you take in the in the ditches six of them and then you always go back and forth these six digits I, I'm sorry about my English but I learn <laughs> yeah and then you put two together then you turn back you go this side you go back all these I like to teach so much if I get room where I can teach and you know so many people they like to learn but you need to have room to do all these things if I get some room yet I like to teach two four five and here is sixth one so I put together we put old-fashioned way like that and then when all my ditches are gone here then I have to take new ditches here and same thing in there and then start knitting and then I get shocked <laughs> uh -huh, just like that <laughs> so well I don't know if there's anything what you like to ask oh and then 
one thing what they also like to learn is uh, macrame. Oh yeah. That that is really something. Uh, boys, I remember young boys when I took a macrame course. Young boys they like to learn because you can use heavier material and then it's amazing how they learn fast and how they do it. Nice job. And it's my my daddy. My daddy used to do all kinds of things. Here is the one what we took it with us, oh, or maybe no. my mom took it uh, with her, and then we was able to save that. That's daddy made those kind of uh, bigger and smaller, and some to put lid on it, and uh, yeah. So th that that's really <laughs> really. So, here is my family. I always say I have five girls, and isn't that okay? Like that? Yep. Five girls, and every single girl have one brother. <laughs> and then lots of people say, my goodness, you have a big family. Because they thought five and five. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. Five girls is Saya, and their only brother, Ari. Satu Maria, who is now in heaven, Sonia, who is in PC, Sari in Flint Flon, and my baby is here in Cranberry Porridge and working at the Tom and Flint Flon General Hospital. And here is the mine I have to show that to my princess Satu Maria when she got married, and they Saya and me and Sonia. And uh, did I take my family? I didn't. I didn't take my family. Oh, there! Do you know, like something? What I always been thinking about? How come girls grow faster? Here is my daddy, and here is mom. Mom, you don't see very much, mom. And then there is ten of us: six boys and four girls. But look at between me and him. We have one year and five months age different. And look at how big <laughs> I'm like horse. <laughs> and he's so small. Only only these two now living in uh, Finland. Helle, my sister, and then Armo, my brother. These two boys, they die. And then Ture die. And these twins, Maya Lisa is um, in Toronto. Penti die. And Oli is in Winnipeg. So they still have um, four girls, one, two, three, four living, and then two boys, Oli and Armo. And you know what? When I was little, I was tomboy. We climbed in that tree, and then here is little, um, was little uh, board, like, oh, um, I don't know, uh, between this tree and this building. So we went, uh, him and me, we was climbing all the way to roof, and one time, uh, we was playing. Big, you know, uh, one was hiding, another one was looking for. And I was laying down and put my hands right there, and then so he didn't find me. So I keep falling, 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 and I fall all the way down. <laughs> almost, almost kill myself. And here is. My baby, when when she was graduated, so that, yeah, and that's why we are here in Cranberry because close on Satu. Yeah, there is Satu. Yeah, there is. Yeah, Satu was I pretty close. Uh, she was nurse. Yeah, there is Satu. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I think so. And then my husband, oh gosh, you know, he was the playboy. <laughs> <laughs> now he don't have no more teeth. And he say he's been without teeth eight years. And still then the lady is running after him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, telling you about. Oh, and these kind of things, you know, from Houston map. Oh. You can do those kind of things. <laughs>
So you can do so many things when you get together and everybody has some kind of creation, some gift. And when we put together those things, these you see in Finland lots. They crochet and they put it down on the wall. Use something to, and then you can decorate at Christmas time or whatever. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's, it's been really, really nice to, really nice to show different things and, and uh, I used to hope that someday there will be some bigger room so where, like, I have, I think, so three different, four different rooms still. Like, I was teaching about 12 in uh, Thompson. When we put in Thompson Citizen that article that was beginning of the uh, 70s, so uh, two and a half classes, Fry Bay show up. And I, I was taking 12 um, students, and I get right away two and a half classes full. <laughs> so then, uh, um, yeah, I was teaching. And then spinning, there is my spinning, spinning wheels. Oh, yeah. So that's something too to learn. So that other one is over 100 years old, but I couldn't, I think so. It's Emma's. I got to give it to Emma. And this little one is uh, Canadian made, and uh, it's, it's, I bought that in here. Yeah, there is my other room. I have to show this one here. It's a little bit smaller. Oh, yeah, the little tiny one. Yeah, and then uh, I think so. That's, I going to give it to Emma. I going to teach Emma how to do weaving. And yeah, and then um, in that scratch, there is one room. And then uh, in the uh, central house basement is one room. Oh, yeah. So I have right away so many rooms, what, I mean, looms, what I can, if I have room, I can teach so many people. So, yeah. But, uh, and you want to just say um, thanks for watching and have a happy culture days? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, you know, have a very happy culture day. And I, I hope some of them was happy to see what I was able to show it to you and uh, be healthy <laughs> and uh, don't get sick, sick about that yeah and if I'm able to someday and if you want I can teach you